face of murder. It's an old face. The face of Abel, not Cain. Abel Jackson, the killer with a smile. And this was the hand of my friend, Abel's father. Jackson was a private investigator, like me. We'd worked many cases together. And one thing we both knew, that the most baffling crime there is, is the one with the Judas touch. This is Abel. Abel Jackson. Mike, something's happened. Something awful. Can you come over? Please. What's wrong, kid? Isn't your dad there? It's about dad. He... Somebody. Somebody what? Dad's dead, Mike. You were one of his best friends. Please. Call the police. I'll be right over. I can't. Hang on to yourself, kid. I'll call. I'll be right over. dad working on, Abel? A case of blackmail, I think. He didn't talk about his work very much. Where's Julia? Who's Julia? Julia? My wife. She was having dinner with her mother tonight. Her mother's not very well. I went to a show and came home early. You and your wife live here, too? Yes, sir. Well, as soon as the doc gets here, that must be him now. Abel! Abel, are you in here? What on earth is this policeman doing in the hall? Expecting you. I'm sorry, Captain. I was held up by the Crosstown traffic. There it is. There's no point in having the kids sit through this, Captain. How about my taking them upstairs and talking to them? Okay, Mike. I'll call you when I bring them down again. What kids? Jackson was too good an investigator. He didn't just sit there and let someone put a stiletto through him. Unless... Unless what, Mike? Unless it was someone he knew awfully well. An old friend, perhaps. A client. Someone he knew and trusted so much he didn't even take his hand off the book he was reading to protect himself. What was he reading? Paradise Lost. <laughs> it was one of his favorites. He used to read it again and again. <coughs> We've told you all we know, Mike. He was working on a blackmail case. He told us about that one night at dinner, but that's all. He was awfully close-mouthed about his work. He didn't want to violate his client's confidences. Yeah, I know. Well... Captain Lundquist is collecting his files. They may give us something. His files? Yeah. 
It isn't likely that the murderer's name will be there in black and white, but they may lead us somewhere. Look, it was kind of you to help out like this, Mike. Thanks a lot. I didn't know which way to turn. It's okay. I'll keep in touch with Captain Lundquist. If he finds out anything, I want to know about it. You've gone to a lot of trouble already. They might resent your continuing on the case. Ordinarily, they might. But your dad was an old friend of mine. And besides... What? If one private detective can wake up wearing a stiletto, you figure maybe it's up to you to find out who hates private detectives so much and do something about it. Thanks. Find anything, Captain? Not yet. Do me a favor, will you? Sure, if it's legal. Keep me posted. This is personal. Okay, Mike, maybe. But no state secrets. I may know more after I go through these. Anything on that? Uh-uh. -uh. Only prints were his own. I wasn't really hopeful about it. Want to improve your mind, Mike? Don't be funny. There's no room for improvement. Sentimental. Yes. I guess I am. Reading it made me feel closer to him somehow. How can you stand being in this room? Everywhere you look, you're reminded. Yes. That's why I thought I'd take a walk. Don't. Don't go out, Julia. I... Somehow, I don't want to be left alone right now. All right, Abel. I won't go. I'll stay. I'm sorry, Abel. I didn't realize I... I've been neglecting you today. What have you been doing? Wondering. Thinking about him. What a wonderful guy he was. Even praying. Oh? What did you pray for? Whoever did it would be caught. Don't worry, Abel. He will be. He? Oh, or she, or, or whoever it was. You're right, Abel. This room is depressing. I'll tell you what. Why don't I make some tea and we can have it upstairs in the sitting room? Would you like that? Yes. It might cheer us up. All right, then. You go on upstairs, and I'll have the tea ready in a jiffy. Go on. You're a wonderful girl. Thank you, Abel. 
I try to be. Shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain. Uh, turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change. I've been rocking this exchange. Uh, popping off and risking things, gonna make a name. I just wanna be famous. But I don't want that cheap fame, no I'm not that vain I just wanna be greatness She get here? Why not a hospital? Well, that's where she would be, except that some well-meaning neighbors moved her in here instead of waiting for the ambulance. The, uh, the woman who owns this place had hysterics, and I had to put her under sedation. What a mess. No one else around? No one. The owner lives alone. No, I, I dislike leaving until a member of the family arrives, but... That must be her husband. Oh, good. I'll talk to him in the hall. Remember, no noise, Mr. Barnett. Uh, no disturbance. I'll be back later. You are. Captain Lundquist called me, Abel. I don't understand. So much all at once. Captain Lundquist said it. Troubles never come singly. That... 
That's Dad's. Uh-huh. Julia had it with her. She was on her way to see me. She had something to tell me. Will she... Oh, yes, she'll be able to tell me sooner or later. We'll just have to be quiet and careful until the doctor comes back. Yes. I must be careful. I mean, she'll be in shock and coming to here in a strange house and... Well, I'm her husband. She'd be more apt to tell me. Why don't I phone you as soon as the doctor says she can be questioned? It, it might be ours. Yeah. Makes sense. Stupid, Abel. I know what she had to tell me. She looked uncomfortable. I just wanted to make her comfortable. Eternally comfortable? I thought you gone. That's what you were supposed to think. Well, what does that mean? It means, Abel, that... You had to make the first move. You're not making sense, Mike. I was just going to... Make her comfortable. You said that. Shall I tell you a story, Abel? <laughs> what about? Captain Lundquist told it to me. Bears repeating. It concerns the son of a private detective who stole information from his father's private files and used it to blackmail an ex-client of his father's. The detective cracked the case, but he got killed for his effort but not before leaving a clue to the identity of the killer. What's that? I don't get it. I'll show you. Stay over there, Mike. <laughs> You're knife happy, Abel. Stay there, Mike. I'd hate to hurt you. All right, then. I'd hate to hurt her. I'm closer to her than you are. Well, that's how it is. That's how it is. What's in that book? A clever man, your father. He left a clue for anyone who cared to read it and make sense of it. Listen. Before me, in opposition, sits grim death, my son and foe. And in the margin, the date. The date his son and foe killed him. That's all he had time to leave. An imaginative man who knew his poetry. This is what Julia found. Is that all? That's no proof what you just read. Nothing that could lead back to me in a court. Of course there isn't. If there were, Captain Lundquist would be here. Nothing leads back to you except that knife in your own hand. Come on, Abel. Why did you do it? Does it matter? Does it what? It was for her. <laughs> the oldest story in the world. I was a two-bit clerk. Two-bit clerks can't afford to fall in love. Dad. Dad believed in young people earning their own living, being independent. 
was afraid. I was awfully afraid I'd lose her. And one day, Dad left one of his files out on his desk. I glanced through it. I was kind of desperate by then. Some of the information seemed so useful. It seemed... Seemed a shame to waste it? That's right. It worked for about a year. I was clever enough. When they turned the case over to Dad, I discovered that he was more clever by far. I wanted to buy her things. Nice things. I wanted to keep her close to me. I wanted to be a big man in her life. I wanted... I had what I wanted for about a year. No pillow fights might drop it! I found out that love... Well, it just isn't. Just another word for safety. So now you're ready to kill her. She was disloyal. She was ready to turn me in. The eternal killer's logic. Everybody's against you. Just one more thing. Why call me in on it? Who else can you turn to in times of trouble except old friends? I didn't expect you to meddle. We can't stay here forever. I don't want to kill again. Only if I have to. Move over there, Mike. Move, Mike. I'm not kidding. So I see. I'm going, Mike. Don't move. It's not you I'd go for. It's an awful spot to be in once you've killed. But I don't want to die. I want to live. Captain, from now on, poetry is going to be very close to my heart. A very thick volume of it. It's all here, Captain, the whole story. What is this all about? The book? It's about a guy who had everything and threw it away. He was an angel, but he couldn't fly.
same channel next week for another exciting case from the file I call Follow That Man. 